this week's bulletin. Concern for kidnapped Christians in Libya. Tough tobacco labeling laws in Solomon Islands. And New York Adventists bring police and the community together. This is In Focus Christian News and Current Affairs. It is believed as many as 26 Egyptian-born Christians have been kidnapped by extremist groups in Libya. Advocacy organizations are concerned that the victims may face enslavement, torture or execution. According to International Christian Concern, one of the radical groups which has kidnapped 21 of the hostages identifies itself as the Libyan arm of the so-called Islamic State Militia. In public statements, the group has described its hostages as Christian Crusaders, highlighting the religious motivations behind the abductions. International Christian Concern wants support for a petition asking the Egyptian government to move immediately to rescue its citizens. From the 1st of January this year, tobacco packaging in the Pacific Island nation of Solomon Islands is required by law to display large graphic health warnings. According to the ABC, the Australian-style regulations are considered to be the toughest among the South Pacific. The change hasn't come without a struggle. The nation's leaders have been debating and negotiating the issue since 2007, with tobacco manufacturers being accused of interfering in the process. This is great to see that we have eventually been able to come to this level, to this stage, and uh, we hope that this won't be just something that happens in the Solomons, but it can be something that can happen right across the South Pacific because cigarette smoking rates in the Pacific are some of the highest in the world. An international team of Adventist television professionals has gathered in Papua New Guinea with the ambitious goal of producing more than 300 episodes of TV in a month. In every family, the arrival of a new baby is met with joy and happiness. We welcome Hope Channel to Papua New Guinea and encourage you to pray and be part of Mega Project Hope. The international team from Hope Channel Studios around the world is working together with local talent, training and mentoring so that production can continue into the future. Hope Channel has placed a high priority on the importance of contextualizing our message, of preparing TV programs for the local people. Hope Channel is already available in parts of PNG via Pay TV. Negotiations are currently underway to begin broadcasting free to air within the next year or two. After the Church of England voted to allow women bishops last November, it has moved quickly to consecrate the Right Reverend Liberty Lane as Bishop of Stockport. According to the BBC, the Church of England has allowed women to be priests for two decades, but opening up more senior roles has been a struggle. During the consecration ceremony in York, one priest shouted, not in the Bible, in protest. But there was lengthy applause from the crowd of around 1,000 at the conclusion of the dedicatory prayer. After moves to re-establish diplomatic relations between the United States and Cuba, the Caribbean nation has now approved the building of the first Roman Catholic Church building since the 1959 Communist Revolution. Historically, Catholics have been viewed suspiciously by the officially atheist government as being sympathetic to the pre-revolutionary Batista regime. But, according to CNN, relations have been gradually improving, with Popes John Paul II and Francis both playing a role. The planned church building is being built with the financial assistance of Cubans living in Tampa, Florida. Adventists in New York have organized a church service focusing on hope and healing after a series of fatal encounters between police and members of the African-American community last year. According to Adventist News Network, the church service, which involved government and police representatives, upheld the example of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., someone who dealt with difficult racial issues with Christian love and outspoken nonviolence. The church leaders said New Yorkers are being faced with a false choice between supporting community rights or supporting the police. They argued that Americans should advocate for both. After years of delays, 2015 is likely to see publishing of research on what may be the oldest existing fragment of any of the four Gospels. According to Life Science, the fragment of the Gospel of Mark is among hundreds of papyrus pieces used by ancient Egyptians to make papier-mâché masks placed over the faces of mummies. 
Researchers are so far keeping mum about the exact words written on the papyrus fragment, and even before their results have been published, there has been controversy about the dating methods used. The fragment of the Gospel of Mark may date back to before the year A.D. 90. As an uneducated shepherd boy in rural Ethiopia, Adu Worku could never have dreamt that he would one day be attending the opening ceremony of a high school named in his honor. Worku, who is now library director of an Adventist college in the United States, received a hero's welcome in his native land. As 6,000 people gathered for the two-day dedication of the multi-building Worku Memorial Academy. Blinded in one eye as a boy, Worku traveled to a distant hospital for treatment where he saw a school and fell in love with learning. He struggled to pay for his education until a Seventh-day Adventist missionary couple he met agreed to sponsor him. He has since earned two master's degrees and an honorary doctorate. Worku raised 600,000 American dollars for the school, which will have its first graduation of students later this year. And speaking of generous donations, St. Vincent de Paul volunteers in Melbourne were shocked when they found a large amount of cash while they were sorting through donated clothes. According to the ABC, the undisclosed amount of money is a very large sum and was found in the pockets of four men's jackets. The Catholic charity wants to be sure that the money, which may represent someone's life savings, wasn't left in the jackets accidentally. They've asked the police to help with tracking down the possibly unwitting donor. That's the news for this week. Goodbye and thanks for watching.